Quarantine cooking with Erica Marie. Hello everybody. I am doing an impromptu episode of Quarantine Cooking with me, Erica Marie. And um, I figured since I'm cooking anyway today, may as well record it. See if this is something that you might want to make for yourself. This is a cauli mashed potatoes. So it's made with cauliflower, it's super easy. And also there's a lot of ways to doctor it up. I'm gonna be using a little bit of cream cheese and butter. But if you're a vegan person, you can always use um, vegan options for those. Um, so it's pretty easy, but again, like always put your spin on it. If you don't have things, um, message me and I could see if we have any um, substitutions for you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have two heads of cauliflower um, and I'm going to cut them up roughly. They don't need to be super tiny because they're all gonna be boiled and smashed anyway. So don't worry about the size so much. The smaller you cut it though, the quicker it's gonna cook. And I also have a pot of boiling water next to me going and everything's gonna go right into that. So, have my cauliflower. Let me show you how I like to break it down. Boop. All right, so I like to put them on they're face down. These are already washed. Cut them in half, watch your fingers, and then there's this stem that I like to remove out of the center. So what I do is I make a V in it. I have just made a V on the bottom and it just pops right out. So get rid of the really green ones, but if there's stem in it, don't worry, because that'll cook up nicely in the collie mash. So I'm just ripping off its little green parts. And now um, you can cut this up if you want, but I'm just gonna break it with my hands and throw it right into the water. And again, any of the green leaves could probably stand, but I just take them out. Okay. And again, I'm going to put my V here on the bottom of this stem. Watch your fingers. And then the stem just gonna pop right out. Boop. And I'm taking out the leaves. So I'm going to do that with my second head of cauliflower too. And it's going right into the pot of water I have next to me. Okay, so the second head of cauliflower is in the wata. And I love this dish so much because I try to not eat a ton of carbs, but I love, love, love mashed potatoes. I'm gonna put a heaping amount of salt into the water, by the way. So um, yeah, I had this dish at uh, a restaurant in Vista. It's better known as a brewery. It's called Belching Beaver. I had it with this big old piece of meat and underneath was this cauli mash. And I was trying to figure out why I liked it so much because I've had cauliflower substitutes before and they've been kind of watery. And their secret is, and this is where you're gonna get a little bit naughty, is you put in one potato. So um, I use these red ones, but you could use the white ones, or if you're going to use a russet, make sure you peel it. But I like using these potatoes for mashed potatoes because you can leave the skins on and um, they cook down and they don't really, I like the texture of them, but uh, yeah, they don't really mess with the um, texture of the potatoes too much when you use them in mashed potatoes. So I'm actually cutting these a lot smaller than I did the um, cauliflower because this is a more dense vegetable it's gonna take a little extra time so if I cut it smaller it'll be done at about the same time as the cauliflower and these are going inside this salted boiling water about 15 minutes all right, so my cauliflower is nice and tender and I'm going to dump it out into a colander, which are those, these things, if you don't know. Hey, I'm not gonna assume. <laughs> and we're just gonna dump it in there. And then what I'm gonna do is use my potato masher, which we will be using later, to press it down a little bit inside of the colander to try to get rid of some of that excess water. Okay, 
so next thing we are going to do is add back into your pot an entire stick of butter. So I did not say that this was a healthy recipe, but it is low carb, but it also has a good amount of fat in it because the cauliflower carries so much water, you have to add a lot of fat back in to get that creamy mashed potato-y taste. So I have an entire stick of butter in there and I put it on the bottom so that once I put the cauliflower that is hot still on top of it, it's gonna melt it really quickly. So, I'm putting my pressed cauliflower into this pot. <laughs> Not the king's colander. Ah! Oh shoot. <laughs> We have a couple of potatoes down. Once they cool, I'll call the dogs over, cleanup crew. So, I'm gonna cover that stick of butter. I could have probably used less now that I'm looking how much going flow I have. But, I don't know. Can't really have too much butter ever, can you? And again, like if you are a vegan, you can use ghee instead, or maybe coconut oil, or whatever you like that's nice and creamy that you use instead of butter, you could do that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use about a third of a package of cream cheese. So this is going to bring back some of that creamy, unctuous goodness that would usually have in a mashed potato. But since, okay, come here puppies. Cleanup crew is coming to get the potatoes. I don't know if you can see them. Hey guys, get the potatoes. So I got three little weenie dogs help me as I cook. So I have a stick of butter, I have some cream cheese, and now my favorite part is I'm gonna put a little bit of sour cream because I love that tanginess that it brings. And also when I make actual mashed potatoes, I do use sour cream a lot. Um, if you don't have sour cream, you can use um, Greek yogurt, and I probably put about a third cup of that. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge. So next thing we're gonna do is mash this all up to your desired consistency. I like it pretty smooth. Some chunks in there isn't gonna hurt it. So we're gonna just mash till it's nice and smooth. Okay, so I've been mashing. <laughs> and it's pretty smooth. Um, I've also added goat cheese to this recipe before in lieu of some of the creamy stuff. So you can play with whatever you like. But my big secret, not so much secret, is adding that potato, even though yes, you're adding some carbs to it, it adds so much flavor and helps the consistency a lot. So if you're missing that comfort food, but you're trying to be kind of good, it's great to put a little bit of potato in it. All right, so now that we are nice and mashed, <laughs> look at it, it just looks like mashed potatoes. Um, you're gonna try it, and this is the key part. And all of you people that say you're not great at cooking, the key is just to taste as you go, and then you'll know for next time like um, what you like in your food. Uh, I might want more sour cream, I might want more salt. Mm. It's nice and creamy, I do need a little more salt. I always keep it handy right next to me. Then I'm gonna mix it again and try it again. The butter is so good. If you don't want to put that much butter, don't, but you know what? We're stuck in quarantine at home, so I'm gonna eat food that tastes good to me. All right, this is so yummy. If you want to put some pepper in there, you can. Um, I think I've done it with goat cheese and gorgonzola before also. So whatever you're having for your meal, you can kind of doctor this up. It's kind of a blank slate. And um, different spoon, promise. I'm gonna taste it again. Perfect. So I hadn't added any salt into the Kali mash after I cooked it. I only added salt to the water, which helped a little bit, but definitely needs more. So this is really our finished product, unless you want to add more stuff to it and use your own substitutions. But I love this recipe so much. I have a meatloaf going on in the oven right now, which is going to go great with this. So that's why I'm making this, but I thought I'd share this with you because this is super easy, really quick. 
And um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks, see you next time.